Back in the year 2000, ABC debuted the first iteration of the hit show Making the Band, and the show continued to air until 2009. Lou Pearlman, the creator of boy bands such as NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, started his reality show Making the Band on ABC to go on a nationwide talent search to form another successful boy group, and it aired for three seasons, finishing on March 30, 2002. The pop group O-Town was formed, but after their record sales dropped and the band was dropped from their label, MTV and producer and record executive Sean Diddy Combs took over the franchise to find his own musical acts. Around 40,000 participants auditioned for Making the Band 2, but only six members were chosen and consisted of four rappers and one singer. And the group was simply named The Band. Making the Band 2 was documented for three seasons and included lots of drama between the members. The group was composed of Sarah Stokes, Dylon Dillinger, Chopper, aka Young City, Babs, Ines, and Freddie P. Their debut album, Too Hot for TV, was released in September 2003 and was certified gold selling 600,000 copies and reached number two on Billboard. But egos, creative differences, and drama kept them from being great. In 2004, due to ongoing issues, Diddy ultimately decided to dismantle the group while they were working on a second album, and Diddy dropped them from the Bad Boy label. At the end of the day, it's not about y'all individually. It's about the band. So now is when life begins, because now, now the cameras ain't going to be on y'all no more. This is the last episode. This is the truth of the matter. The decision is that the band is dismantled. All of the members eventually faded into obscurity. Here's what happened to the members of the band. Back for third season for one reason to show the rap game that we've been. And when it comes to the best, we got the best. Send the stage when the band hit the scene. They gotta see. You won't believe how we affect so many family trees. People rushing us in the street for a finale they speak. We've been all around the globe and some crying with me, so just watch MTV. You might be witness with every group in the gang go through. All in good times, grinding, trying to pay y'all dues. To be one of the best that ever done it, so tune in tight, cause it's about to go down. Lloyd Mathis, better known as E. Ness, is a Philly rapper who was highly favored by Diddy and was the first pick for the group. He was also given the role as the leader of the group and had brawls with fellow group mate Freddie P over his position. After the group split, Diddy chose to keep Ness and Babs signed to Bad Boy as a hip-hop duo, but he never released any music through the label and was eventually released from his contract. He returned to his hometown of Philly to continue battle rapping and has continued to release underground mixtapes. He calls himself the king of battle rap. Frederick, who went by Freddie P, is a rapper from Miami and was the second person selected by Diddy to be in the group. He also worked closely with the singer of the band, Sarah, to help her with her writing skills. Freddie was known as the thumb-sucking, hot-headed member who had a few brawls with Ness. I say, f*** that. I gotta get this off my chest. I'm recording. Freddie just ran in and jumped on him. He eventually grew frustrated with the ongoing issues in the group and missing out on spending time with his infant son, so he asked to be dropped from the group. Can you come back tomorrow? I can't come back tomorrow. You can't? You said you can't come back tomorrow? 
Why? I'm like, I'm still dealing with these niggas, sir. I don't know, man. It ain't this yeah. shit ain't gonna work out. And, I, and I'm missing out, I'm, I'm missing out time my son. This shit getting more serious now. Like, if, if fuck one, I, I don't know, man. Like, with that band, they with the man. Trying to cut me, dog. After leaving the band, he returned to Miami and continued to make him music. In 2013, Freddie and Babs released a song together. Sarah Stokes was the only singer to be chosen for the group and often had creative differences with the rest of the group. The amount of cigarette smoking from the other members always irritated her. She had three children back at home and her husband Tony, who was also her manager, always inserted himself in the group's business affairs, which eventually led to him getting banned from being around the group. Why you like trying to take over something that you ain't got not a clue of what you're doing? Sarah, you just gotta take the bitter with the sweet, man. Quit being so soft, man. If I don't sign it, then nobody else in the group gets their money either. We all have to sign it. I don't care about it. Well, no. I don't rush it on money. Sir, I'm a f husband of mine. His f business. Hear me out. If she needs to converse with her other half of one, if that's the way their union works, that's the way it's gonna be. But this group is a union. This is a, that's that's cool. this is a union. Okay. So if the group is a union, then you have. Seven people in the group. She's in that booth by herself. Her and her she sings by herself. One. And when she get on stage, her she gonna be on stage. Her husband or one. is not gonna be on it stage. Is totally Everybody, stay the out of the business. Okay. Handle your business when it comes to Sarah. So you he's always around. He's always voicing the pain on band issues. And he thinks he can do that because he's married to Sarah. What are you doing? You ain't in the band. Sarah in the yeah, band. Yeah, but that's my wife. Y'all ain't, ain't married. Sarah's sitting right there, not saying nothing. How you gonna let your husband come in and stir up conflict between your co-workers? Following the group's breakup, Sarah struggled with depression while searching for her next big break. She went to beauty school and got certified to be an esthetician. In 2009, she was arrested for domestic violence after allegedly stabbing her husband. According to law enforcement sources, Sarah stormed out of the house after arguing with her husband, Tony. She slipped on wet tile and smashed her face, but accused him of doing it. She then proceeded to grab a knife and stab Tony in the arm in front of their children. Her lawyers released a statement that read, Sarah and Tony have a very passionate and loving relationship that on August 2nd, while having an evening of fun, she slipped and fell, hitting her head heavily on the ground, and somehow in the process of helping her, Tony got injured. Mm, I don't really know if I believe that statement, but she did get three years probation in a plea deal. Two years later, Tony allegedly ch***ed and beat Sarah. Then in 2014, Sarah was arrested again after a fight with her husband and served 93 days in jail for violating her probation. And Tony filed for divorce two days later, but eventually decided to make their marriage work. In 2016, she starred in the BET-centric show From the Bottom Up, which was a six-part docuseries following the journey of five women who, after falling from grace, are trying to make changes to turn their lives around, produced by Queen Latifah. But Sarah was upset with BET, who she claimed promised to show her in a more positive light, but instead damaged her image by referring to her as a man beater. Her and Tony have since split in recent years. Dylan John, better known as Dylan Dillinja, was the most troubled member of the group. He is a Grenadian reggae rapper from Brooklyn, and Diddy saved him from going to jail after writing a letter to the judge and selecting him to be a part of the band. Right now, I got community service as well as probation. I grew up as a rebel, you know what I'm saying? So everything from the crimes as a juvenile delinquent, being arrested, being locked up. Is there a chance you're about to do some time? Yes. I wrote a passionate letter to the judge. It was a shot in the dark, but the letter worked. Well, instead of sending me to jail, the judge gave me probation. But Dylan was extremely lazy, rebellious, and did whatever he wanted. 
He often used his probation as an excuse to miss shows, interviews, rehearsals, and appointments. His absence caused him to be removed from songs and was eventually kicked out of the group by Diddy. Dylan went to probation earlier this morning. He never called. Everyone's looking for him. I'm tired of playing as a team, but nobody wanna That's listen it. to <laughs> shit. Where's Dylan at? Yeah, no, no, no. What happened? He did this shit for three days. What's his reason for the last three days? He got mad at something happened at the studio. Like nobody really knows what it was. Last time seen Dylan. Why are you here? The day before yesterday, he left like four in the morning, and we haven't heard or seen from him since. When's the last time you heard from Dylan? Never worried. You with me? Where's Dylan at? I'm like, Dylan is here? Who? What? As a band, we're fed up with Dylan. Yeah. I mean, he done burned a couple of bridges. He doesn't behave well. I mean, he don't mean he make his own choices. Yeah. You know what he's doing. Get your ass out of my house now. Please. You, get the out of my house now. Get the out of my house now. Get the out of my house. I swear to God, get the out of my house. Come on, let's get the move. Let's go. Let's go. Get. Don't even take your We just keeping your Given a chance, would I have done anything differently? No. After the end of the band, Dylon got a little bit of fame from one of the Chappelle show's most famous skits, which happened to be a Making the Band parody. In the skit, Dave Chappelle portrayed Dylon. Dylon, Dylon, and Dylon, because I spit hot fire. In 2014, he stated that he still earns money from being mentioned in the skit. He eventually signed a deal with Akon's Con Live label and continued to work on his music. He released an album titled Pain to Power. Lanice Wiley, better known as Babs Bunny, was the band's only female rapper and was from Brooklyn. When the band dissolved, she and Ness remained a part of the record label and were working on an album, but those plans fell through. She was released from her contract with Bad Boy Records, but continued to make music and started showcasing other female rappers. In 2010, she created Queen of the Ring, a movement and battle circuit focusing on female artists, and her female rap battle league has since become one of the largest in the world. We provide a platform for female artists that might have gotten overlooked in the industry, the mainstream industry, because we don't care about what most industry people care about is the size of your butt, you know, your breasts, your skin complexion. Queen of the Ring strictly is there to provide a platform for talent, for female talent. And it's been doing great and we have earned the respect. So now people watch it and they looking for the talent. In 2014, she gave birth to her first child, Aiden. Ryan Little. <laughs> Kevin Barnes, better known as Chopper, was a rapper from New Orleans and was the youngest member of the group and also the cockiest. He was 17 years old when he joined the show and the little bit of exposure from the show started getting to his head. Chopper's kind of wilding out. Sometimes it makes me feel a little bit embarrassed because it's like he always got to act like an ass every, everywhere we go. I don't want to hear it. Dog. He got us out here looking like fools because of his mouth. What did you say to him, man? Come on, come on, man. That's what I'm saying, dog. You have to give a f Since all the fans was chasing me, I said to myself, okay, watch this. Crazy. I ain't wearing tennis shoes from now on. It's crazy right now. They He's say funny. your boy Chopper's still down there, all in a mm -hmm. pandemonium. He's like a child to me. See, that's dangerous. You know that them kids is gonna be like going bananas and chasing. 
So mm-hmm. why even go through all that? Because he want, he liked the attention. I'm about to crash their party. I'm about to crash their party. They had this white convention, a whole bunch of white people. I looked in there, I didn't see no black people. All the people looking at me like, what the f- Bobby? What is going on? Yo, yo, the dog is here. The security ain't gonna touch me. I'm city. Hey, I need you to stop. You're in the middle of my hotel, closing a pan. I think Chopper is the most affected by the fame because he's the youngest. But he's gonna get a crash course. He's gonna get a quick lesson in being a young adult. I crash all parties. Whites, blacks, Hispanic, demanic, chicanic, commandic, commandic, commando. Watch that fame, boy. It'll hurt you. Chopper was signed to Diddy's Bad Boy South label, but of course, no music or album was ever released through the label, and the deal fell through. He was also disappointed by the lack of support from Diddy when he lost everything during Hurricane Katrina. Chopper then signed with Cash Money Records, and one of his songs landed on the soundtrack for the film Hustle and Flow. He was also able to collaborate with artists such as Lil Wayne, Chingy, and Princess from Crime Mob. But his career started being plagued by legal troubles. He received two years probation for an old robbery charge in Maryland, and in 2013, he was arrested on warrants for extortion and battery. He was also shot while driving his Lamborghini in Michigan in a botched robbery. He is currently still making music and is releasing music under the name Chopper City. Since Diddy broke them apart, they haven't really had an official reunion, but they do keep in touch and see each other from time to time. Would you guys be here for a Making the Band reunion tour with all the groups? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure you like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.